Welcome back to the MMA Plug on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio. I'm your host, Jordan Kurtz. Give me a follow along online at Comments from the Peanut Gallery. For this segment this week, we're going to take a trip into Kurtz's Corner. Now, this one is very recent. Basically, hot off the presses, if you will. PFL has announced the first major event of the year in their champ versus champ card. And they mostly, mostly got it right. It's scheduled for February 28th in Saudi Arabia. And again, they got most of the matchups right, in my opinion. But there is one glaring omission from the bout sheet so far. Just to give you a rundown of what's been announced so far, in the main event, you have the 2023 PFL heavyweight champion, Henan Fajeda, who will be taking on the Bellator heavyweight champion, Ryan Bader. Boom. Knock that one out of the park. No brainer. In the co-main event, you have the 2023 PFL light heavyweight champion, Ipa Kasanganai, who will be facing the current Bellator middleweight champion, Johnny Eblen. In 185 pound fight. That one, obviously, uh, you know, it's one guy going down a weight class, but it makes sense because if you recall our conversation surrounding that PFL finale, Impa is a middleweight. He just fought up for the opportunity at 205 and just really didn't have to do much in terms of cutting weight for this season for PFL as a light heavyweight. Also on the main card, you have. 2023 PFL champion Jesus Pinedo, who will be taking on the Bellator featherweight champion Patricio Pitbull. That's going to be another opportunity for Patricio Pitbull to go out there against uh, an opposing organization's champion, if you will, to collect another belt for his resume. That's a fight that right away on paper to me, you know, that you got to fight the fight, right? But I would have to think that that's going to be one of the biggest favorites of these champ versus champion matchups so far, with Patricio Pitbull being the uh, the favorite there. You will then have the 2023 PFL welterweight champion, Magomed Magomed Karimov, who will be facing the Bellator welterweight champion, Jason Jackson. That's a fight that I'm extremely interested in watching. Jason Jackson is a longtime veteran of the game, has mixed it up in the training room with some of the best of the best for years upon years, back to Hard Knocks 365, Black Zillions, to uh, Killcliffe, to Sanford, whatever all the iterations of that South Florida gym are. You know, all, all the savages that have came through in and around that welterweight division. That dude has been in the room with some of the absolute best of the best. Anybody that I know who has worked with and been around Jason Jackson say that he is a consummate professional, and that dude is a pure savage. Pure savage. He's a mat rat. He works his tail off, and he's going to have a tough matchup against somebody like a Magomed Magomed Karimov, who's a two-time PFL champion and has a strong grappling acumen. But Jason Jackson is good all the way around. But again, that's why you fight the fight. And seeing those two top welterweights in those other respective organizations that are now merged, I am all in for that particular matchup there. Beyond those champ versus champ announcements, you will see the fight card also feature a number of uh, other high-profile matchups that's between guys from each of the opposing rosters. You're going to have... The former heavyweight champion in PFL, Bruno Capeloza, taking on the Bellator light heavyweight champion, Vadim Nemkov. You're going to have Clay Collard taking on AJ McKee at lightweight. Take my money. That is going to be an absolute banger of a fight. Clay Collard fought for the PFL lightweight championship this last year. He's been all the way around pro boxing rounds, he's had a run in the UFC. You know, Clay Collard has just been one of those longtime vets all all around the block. AJ McKee, the former featherweight champion, now in a lightweight division, you know, he's trying to make his run and forge his path there at 155 pounds. This is a matchup that for me <laughs> you you gotta love. 
it, it, for all of just the pure potential brutality that may come of it. And it may be a little bit late in the game for each of these two guys as opposed to what this fight could have been a few years ago. But you have both guys who are questionably chemically enhanced, one of them for sure because he obviously popped, but then the other one beat his his case for uh, for his USADA violation back in the day. But that is Tiago Santos taking on Yoel Romero. Again, those two guys, the explosive power that they possess between the two of them, how could you not be in for this matchup? And again, they may both be on the very tail end of their run, but God, you have got to love that matchup on paper. And if they have any sort of way of catching lightning in a bottle and being able to bring that to this matchup against each other, which, you know, for Yoel in his last couple of fights, it's either there or it's not. But if it is, that matchup could potentially be electric and explosive. Now, currently, you have Gabriel Braga, who is scare- scheduled to take on Aaron Pico. Do want to throw quick T's and P's and condolences out to uh, to Gabriel Braga. His father was just murdered in Brazil. So wh- whether or not that fight continues on the schedule or not, I, I don't know if that one will continue, but that is one that's currently announced and is on the schedule right now. You're going to have the pro debut of Biagio Ali Walsh. You also have Clarissa Shields expected to be on the card, but she doesn't have an opponent announced at this time. Now, guys, I did mention that these are certainly some incredible fights, but there is one that is missing that I still haven't seen any sort of concrete or valid reasoning as to why the fight hasn't been made, and that's Cyborg against Kayla Harrison. Cyborg came out just again this week making a statement that's her number one goal is to have that fight be made. I don't know why that hasn't been announced or what the hole up in that one being made is, but again, Don Davis, PFL, very rarely is there ever demand from the fans for a women's fight. You have that right now on a golden platter for you. You have the biggest name in the course of your organization's history for PFL in Kayla Harrison, and you have the most decorated champion in women's MMA history with championships spanning across multiple organizations, including but not limited to Invicta, the UFC, Bellator. You have Chris Cyborg, who is right there waiting and ready for this fight. I know the Cyborg at times can be difficult in terms of the business and the negotiation, so maybe that's the holdup, but we haven't had any sort of statement to let us know why that fight has not been made just yet. What do you think of this PFL versus Bellator champs card? Let me know on social media. That's Jordan Kurtz at comments from the peanut gallery. Stick around after the break, folks. We're going to tie the hour up by going three rounds. This is the MMA plug presented to you by Mile High Sports on 98.1 FM. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. That helps us continue to produce this original MMA content and bring it for you every single week. Tune in to the MMA plug on 98.1 FM, Mile High Sports Radio, 